Okay, we know markets can fail when there are negative externalities and when there are demerit goods. Therefore, there is rationale for the government to intervene, and one way they can intervene is by imposing indirect taxes on goods and services that are demerit goods or goods and services that generate negative externalities. What do I mean by indirect tax? Well, you can have two types of taxes, indirect or direct. Indirect taxes can be passed on. So they're imposed on firms, yes, they're a cost for firms, but they can pass on this cost to consumers via higher prices. Whereas direct taxes like income tax and corporation tax have to be paid by the individual or by the firm. They can't be passed on. So indirect taxes, you can either have specific taxes, which are unit taxes, or you can have ad valorem indirect taxes, which are percentage taxes like VAT. We're going to look here at um, unit taxes to solve negative externality and demerit good market failures. So how do they work? Well, to show how they work, let's draw a very simple demand and supply diagram. So we've got price and quantity, and we have a demand curve and a supply curve. Right, we know equilibrium price and quantity is where it goes into set. Indirect taxes raise the cost of production for firms, which shifts the supply curve upwards. The vertical distance between the two supply curves, wherever that is, the vertical distance between the two represents the unit tax. Let's say that's one pound for every bottle of wine, whatever it might be. The vertical distance tells you the tax. So if it was one pound for a bottle of wine, the vertical distance would represent one pound. It's the unit tax. So as a result of the, of the tax, supply shifts up, new equilibrium, P2, Q2. Okay, so quantity falls, price increases. But we can actually work out a lot more. Like I said, the vertical distance is the unit tax. So going from the new equilibrium vertically downwards to the old supply curve, that tells you what the tax was per unit. <clears throat> Multiply that by the number of units sold, which is Q2, and you get a box which is made here. And that box represents the total revenue generated for the government by this tax. But going further, we can then split up this box into different areas to represent what the consumer pays and what the producer pays of this tax. Well, the consumer simply pays the difference in price. Okay? So part of the box, which represents a difference in price from P1 to P2, is paid by the consumer. The other part of the box is then paid by the producer. Okay? So what we can show is that when demand is more inelastic, consumer pays a much higher burden. Whereas when the demand is more elastic, consumer pays a much lower burden and the producer pays a higher burden. So in terms of who pays uh, how much of the tax, it depends on the elasticity of demand. <clears throat> but going back to how the market failure is solved, taxes work because they reduce quantity levels. So for both negative externalities and demerit goods, the problem was of overconsumption and overproduction issues. So by imposing a tax, at least in theory, the quantity in the market moves towards the social optimum level. Okay, we're moving left. Remember where Q star was on our market failure diagrams? We're now moving in that direction, getting closer to the social optimum, which is good. Which is very good. So let's look at why indirect taxes are good things. Let's look at solving negative externality market failure. Well, it's a good thing because output reduces. Okay, so output falls more specifically towards the social optimum level. Okay. Why else is it good? Well, if the negative externality is pollution, you have the whole polluter pays argument. The tax is imposed on the polluter on the firm, the firm has to pay. Okay, polluter pays. Why else is it good? Well, revenue is generated for the government. Okay, so the revenue is generated by the government. Maybe the government can use that money to uh, impose policies or implement policies that could also solve these market failures. So maybe information campaigns, uh, maybe subsidies, you know, other uh, policies that could actually be used to solve the market failure uh, could be done using the revenue gained from this tax. Okay, so the revenue is also a good thing for the government. Okay, what about for demerit goods? Well, same thing. So output falls, so that's a good thing, towards the social optimum. Excellent. Okay, the price increase might mean that consumers change their consumption habits. We know with demerit goods there's an overconsumption of them, where if the price now suddenly goes up, well, that might limit consumption. It might mean consumers move elsewhere and consume other things, which is good, which is exactly what the point is here. And at the same time, you've got the, the revenue argument again. Okay, so revenue for government as well. Good, but what are the problems here? Well, 
De well, first of all, the effect depends on the elasticity of demand. If demand is very inelastic, quantity won't fall very much. Okay, so what if demand is inelastic? You know, this tax will not be as effective. At the same time, you might get an adverse effect on consumer welfare. So. Most demerit goods, you could say, most goods that generate externalities, negative externalities, have got inelastic demand, like cigarettes and alcoholic drinks. So, you put a tax on these where demand is inelastic, simply the consumer is just going to bear a much higher price. The consumer is going to bear the brunt of the tax. So, there's going to be an adverse effect on consumer welfare. Okay? Even more than that, you can say uh, taxes tend to be regressive. Okay? That's the regressive. They hit uh, people on lower incomes much harder than people on higher incomes. Okay, so taxes are regressive. Um, and at the same time, you could also bring in another argument that, that there is a potential rise of black market activity. Okay, especially if the tax is very severe. Okay, the tax is very severe you might get black markets that come about. All right, and finally, what does the effect of a tax depend on? Well, one, it depends on the elasticity of demand, as we've said. It depends on also the level of information that is available to the government. How does the government know the right level to tax? How does the government know what this vertical distance should be in terms of value? Okay, very difficult to know. At the same time, how does the government know what the social optimum level is? Difficult to know. So, who knows whether the government sets the right tax or not? So information issues there. But at the same time, if black markets do come about, can the government police them? Can the government actually prevent them happening in the first place? More dependent factors there on whether the tax will be effective. So maybe therefore, especially if a lot of these goods are, have got inelastic demand, we need to look elsewhere at other solutions. And that's what we're going to consider next, regulation. See you next time.